I'm sitting here with Layla, and Layla has gone through our Green Door Life program, and so we get to talk about it because this is one of our favorite things now is to like share the experience of what you had while you went through the program. So mm -hmm. let's start with uh, the beginning in terms of where you were at when you came to us mm -hmm. and like why you came to us in the first place, and then maybe go from there. Okay, so I am an athlete, um, I do circus arts. Um, I got hurt back in the end of May um, until like mid-June. So I had not been training um, and was kind of eating my feelings about it because I was really upset. <laughs> um, and I uh, reached out um, in July when I had my like my point of, man, I really need to get a hold of this. I felt like my training wasn't as effective as it could have been. Mm -hmm. um, my my recovery was terrible. Mm. It would take a few days to recover from like two hard days. Mm. So I spent more time recovering than I did training, which doesn't really make sense if you're an athlete. Um, and I also felt like uh, I had a lot of emotional eating issues where I would get upset and be like, oh, we're going to eat half a pack of donuts or whatever I had in my fridge. My thing for a while was like, really, really heavy ice cream. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what initially prompted me to reach out. Awesome. So, okay, a lot of great things because the recovery time is such a massive thing. And yeah. I think for most athletes, they're just like so driven to the performance and then they don't even take into consideration the recovery. Right. Like maybe they might take a rest day, like a rest day. A rest day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they don't even look at like the nutrition as a form of recovery as well right. and how it really supports that. Right. So around that, what did you find? Um, I found a um, that doing the balance between my carbs, fat, and protein, um, if I, you know, the, the rearranging of my day, I think was mm -hmm. the biggest thing of making sure that I balanced my day where I was eating enough protein. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting not nearly enough protein. I was probably getting maybe a quarter of the amount of protein before that I mm -hmm. should have been. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and um, going from that to also upping my water intake and making sure I got enough water. Mm -hmm. um, that I think those two were the biggest things of just the next day I'd be like, oh, I actually have enough energy. And by day five of training, I'm like, okay, mate, now I've earned my recovery days. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been totally like night and day. Oh my gosh. And it's so funny because like those things aren't like these super complicated no, things to no, do. No, not at all. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways is I'm like, oh, actually, I thought this was going to be so incredibly difficult. And so I avoided it for a while because initially I got rec recommended by Christine Lee mm -hmm. um, a year ago. And she was like, you should do it, da da da, da. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. And I just avoided it like the plague. Uh -huh. And now I wish I would have done it five years ago. <laughs> um, and it's been so incredibly easy. Like, I still eat, you know, the same way, just different proportions and more mindfully. Exactly. And I I even, Lisa and I talk about this a lot. Like, I wish I learned this when I was like 16. Yeah. It would have saved me years yes. <laughs> of my life. Like, just kind of shooting in the dark and going like, huh. Is this going to work? Like right. reading a magazine, a new diet, new recipe, right. new starvation technique. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's amazing. And I love that. So Layla also went through kind of having like dinners out and mm -hmm. having events and then having to train around gigs and having to eat around gigs. And so it was like kind of everything that could have been experienced around right. food definitely yeah. came into play. Right. So how did you find the act of like navigating menus and restaurants and all that kind of stuff? Um, where I could, or if, we, if I knew we were going out, I would try to plan ahead. So, um, you know, you, you preach a lot about recovery meals. Um, so I would try to re get my recovery meals to the days I was going out so I didn't have to worry as much, which mm -hmm. took kind of my mind off of it. If it was a day that I wasn't, I would definitely plan ahead. Uh -huh. So if, for example, like we were going out to pizza, oh, pizza. Um, in the morning, I might do a very, very light carb or no carb and then try to get a little bit lighter of the carb throughout the day mm -hmm. um, so then I can eat what I want. Exactly. Yeah. And then did you feel like that made it more of a sustainable practice and then maybe took some guilt out of the picture as yeah. well? Oh, completely. And also, I didn't feel like the next day how you can feel heavy after eating some stuff. Mm -hmm. I've never felt that, mm -hmm. um, which has been life changing. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my god, it's so good. And it's like there it's just like little changes. It's right. not like you're eating differently per se. 
But that's like the most amazing yeah. part. I yeah. get to still eat my favorite foods. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just when I eat them or how much I, of, the, of them that I eat. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so do you feel like you can now unlearn what you've learned? Um, going through the program? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I don't think so. And I like I actually have a coworker that we both do macros mm -hmm. and we just like nerd out about it. Uh -huh. And like there's no way I can go back and like even in my head I look at something and I'm like, oh that's like probably about fifty grams. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm like, okay, that's about four ounces. Great. Like <laughs> totally. That's awesome. Like this is the whole point. <laughs> It's the whole point, you yeah. guys, <laughs> because like the whole idea is that we have our body and don't you want to be able to like accurately have like an educated estimation of like, yes, I know that that is going to fit in my body. I know how it's going to feel. I know how my performance is going to feel. I know how I'm going to recover. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck yes. 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 Yeah. So much yes. Right. Um, and then what we were talking about before in terms of the self-reflection and body image stuff. Right. So what, what came about in that area? Um, well, like in the middle of the program, uh, I had some, uh, how would you say, I guess body <laughs> shaming, um, and which kind of brought back a lot of like old stuff when I was a performance artist, like as a dancer, um, and took a step back from that and just kind of rearranged my brain to think about, this is what I'm doing for my body to build muscle and to be as healthy as I possibly can be. My energy is up like 200% than it was when I was like this tiny itty bitty of your tongue dancer, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, that wasn't treating my body well. And mm -hmm. I think there's a correlation between like eating well and putting good things into your body, like mm -hmm. intentionally yeah. versus like, I want to look this way mm -hmm. and being like, you know, not healthy. Right. Totally. Because it, I mean, how you're describing it as well, it makes me think that one of them is coming from an outside, um, affirmation yes. and the other one is coming from actually an inside affirmation. Yes. Exactly. Of like, I choose to do this because I feel good and right. it's like a form of self care and self love. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing and it's beautiful, but it's like such a cool thing to experience. Right. And the shift, like, uh, the shift in everything, like, you know, treating my body better also means I'm going to bed earlier. It means I'm getting more sleep. It means my productivity is better everywhere in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and also Absolutely. my mental health has been better as well because I'm doing all the good things for my body. Yeah, so. <laughs> totally. It just like, it's, it's, uh, when you start to focus on one area of your life and you can really dial in the tools there mm -hmm. then it just starts to become that ripple effect. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we always like geek out on, like yeah. you were saying, because it's when you just take food, which is something we do every single day of our life, and you just kind of hone in on the practice there, and you notice how you start to feel better, and like how your energy levels are better, your sleep is better, mm -hmm. your emotional stability is better, because foods play a big role in our emotions, right. Yeah. Um, then all of a sudden you start to just, it's a cascade effect. Yes. So yeah. And I will say that in the beginning, maybe the first oh, week and a half, it was hard. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done, <laughs> but it wasn't easy. <laughs> so I had to really think about how do I restructure all the same meals I've made for the past three years? Mm -hmm. How do I restructure that? How do I eat every three hours and make sure I can eat every three hours? Yes. Um, which was a lot to start with. Um, and then once that happened, my stress level is just gone down. I know exactly mm. what I'm going to eat. I know exactly how to eat it, when to eat it. Um, there is no like, oh, but I don't really want to eat this because of that and da da da. Like, it's really, it's so much easier and more streamlined and mm. yeah. lovely. <laughs> well, also, like, it's amazing how much brain space, like, having to yes. figure out what to eat every day, how much yeah. it occupies. Yeah. And just like stressing right. out about it. Yeah. It's weird. How many times do you think about food a day? I'm like, oh man, I have to feed myself again. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, pacing around the kitchen going like, what do I want? Just like fridge. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I'll come back five minutes later. Fridge. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. Now it's like, you're like, oh, I need a protein and I need a carb and like a vegetable. Yes. I'm like, maybe I don't want a carb and right. I have all these options. Now I know exactly what I'm mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. It's... The option of a carb free meal never mm -hmm. occurred to me. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, but, but I need that and I don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't <need> it. <laughs> totally. So then you're, do you feel like now you're clued into whether you need a carb or whether even like you need fats or proteins or yeah, my body has become really responsive to mm -hmm. what I get, what I give to it. So if I'm, you know, training a lot, um, the next day I definitely want a little bit more carb 
uh, and protein. Um, you know, and then as a woman, you know, with your hormone levels and that type of thing, that was really mm -hmm. insightful as well. I'm like, okay, cool. These two times a month, I have to eat this much. And that's mm -hmm. fine. That's totally fine. We'll plan for that. That's right. right. So. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I, I love that too, because as we get more sensitive, we realize that our body's been telling us this stuff the whole time. Right. And yeah. we just have been maybe like not trusting the mm -hmm. signals, you know, like, of course you're going to be hungry before your period yeah, starts. Exactly. There's a lot of shit going There's on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do some work during that time. Yeah. I need some fuel. Yeah. So that's amazing. And then there was one thing, uh, other thing that you were sharing and now you've shared so much so far. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think I lost it. Was it drinking? Oh, well, there's another one. Oh. <laughs> Drinking. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> um, that was a, a change of mindset for me as well. Mm. Um, before I started the program, or I guess at the very beginning, um, I used to drink and go out with coworkers a fair amount. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm young, you know, whatever. Um, and now I still go out and drink. Um, I am smarter with what I drink um, and what types of alcohols I drink. Um, and or what kind of cocktails I drink if mm -hmm. I drink cocktails mm -hmm. um, and also planning my day for it so mm -hmm. I you know that would be a carbs so alcohols and carbs so I would plan on eating a carb free dinner um, and that actually helps my recovery the next day and I don't feel as hungover totally. which who would have thought so. <laughs> <laughs> okay amazing and then when you talk about like changing the alcohol mm -hmm. what has that changed into like your choices how has that changed from before um, before I would say I was more of like a, um, a wine drinker, like mm -hmm. a heavy wine drinker. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been a whiskey person, mm -hmm. um, but I've always been like, uh, or I used to be like a Coke and Jack kind of person, oh, you know, yes. like the, the oh, soda yeah. and uh -huh. the, like the, not the sugar free kind, like the full sugar, uh -huh. like the whole thing, um, or a cocktail person. Mm -hmm. Um, so very, very sugar, very like fancy we're in San Francisco very pretty artisanal cocktails and whatnot totally. um, and since um, I can go out and just sip on like uh, a scotch neat or I feel very fancy doing it as well I'm just like yes this is my scotch you know um, <laughs> <laughs> you get different looks right People I'm like this I am this person uh -huh. that's right <laughs> yes one ice cube please yes. thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh you don't have a whiskey rock I'm so disappointed <laughs> So true. Uh, whenever I order my scalp, people are like, did you want a mixer with that? And yeah. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> Just the best scalp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad now we can be in that little yeah. it's made, straight liquor yeah. society. It's made dating really funny because it's like, um, you know, the guy goes out, he orders like, oh, I want old fashioned da da. I'm like, can I just get that neat? <laughs> They're just like, oh, this is what we're getting into. Okay. <laughs> It does really like level up a little bit I, though, right? Yeah. People are like, oh, you're that kind of guy. Oh, wow, she's classy. Right? <laughs> exactly. Somehow like removing sugar adds a touch of class to it. Yeah. Just, yes. And it reduces hangovers, guys. Yes. So we're just yes. like yes. winning all over. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so, okay. I remember the question okay. I was going to ask, but I'm very happy that we got to the alcohol <laughs> topic. So you talked about it being hard in the beginning. Right. So what did you feel like was the most challenging in the beginning? Um, I think one of the big things that was challenging in the beginning was getting in the habit of um, eating earlier. Because mm. um, usually I'm rushing around, I have a commute, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so eating earlier was difficult at first. Um, and also eating every two and a half to two to three hours or so yep. um, was really hard. Uh, I did have set a timer on my phone and like plan it. Okay, at one at four and then also what was also tricky was um balancing like um before training mm -hmm. like okay i'm having lunch here snack here for training training recovery yes dinner. yes but sometimes like stacking on it is like like okay i'm eating all day long <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> um but that goes into with the planning you know the minute mm -hmm. i started planning things more and um getting ahead of it is when it was no brainer everything was planned out i would have things you know logged ready to go mm -hmm. um and then I could adjust where I needed to if I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, but it was definitely the planning was 
the harder part. Mm. Um, I had to make a night of just like meal prepping and like sitting and um, and making sure I had the stuff ready to go. Yeah, but I think overall, um, I mean, I am not someone who's just is at home all the time. So mm. I found a lot of success with getting the stuff from you know supermarkets or whatever that's already packaged and ready and I'll make lunch at work. Oh yeah. So that's really helpful. Yeah, you were super creative with that. Yeah. And that's knowing what cool. to look for. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I kind of appreciate that like you that there is that planning and that structure mm -hmm. because I think in anything in life that we want to succeed at, we gotta do a little planning yeah. for it. At least a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. And then it starts to become a rhythm and you start to get into the mode. And also, I feel like when we start to plan that area of our life, other things get easier to plan around it mm -hmm. almost. Like right. it like puts these markers throughout our day and then right. we're like, oh, I'm having breakfast here and then I'm having mm -hmm. a snack and like things have to go around that. Right. So now I have these markers. Yeah. And weirdly, it also kind of puts into perspective like socially too, like, mm. oh, actually, that doesn't align with what I want to do. <laughs> I'm okay. Like, it's fine. I don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Absolutely. So, oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, is there anything else we didn't touch on? Um, I don't... Oh, actually, I do have one more question. Okay. <laughs> so, you, uh, what do you do for work? Um, well, I have a medical job. Um, <laughs> I work as an office manager for a tech company. Mm -hmm. um, and then by night, I am a circus artist and teacher. Okay. So, needless to say, this woman's busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the understatement yes. of the year. <laughs> yeah, and I get so many different people who are coming. They're new, and they're like, you know, I have a crazy schedule, and and I want to say to everybody, everyone has a crazy schedule now. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know one person that's like, no, nah, I'm just at home, yeah. like chilling. <laughs> Nobody does yeah. that here. I just relax all day. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll go get my nails done or like walk my dog and everyone's like squeezing it all in. Mm -hmm. So once you got that rhythm, did you feel like it was, it was, I mean, it already sounds like it was, but did you feel like it was manageable to fit it in with your life? Oh, completely. Like, I think it actually, you know, bar the first two weeks mm -hmm. of adjustment period, which is normal. Mm -hmm. um, it's made my life so much easier and just... I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about dinner or whatever. It's already made or ready to go. Or I know oh, I'm going out. I'm going to get this, this, and this so I can make that work for me. Yeah. Um, I think it's about making your food work for you and not you for it. Exactly. <laughs> so. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> On that note, make your food work for you, <laughs> not you work for it. Tagline. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. That was thank awesome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, guys.